Okay, so I normally start videos off with like a joke or something, but for this one I just want to get straight to the point. That way I don't lose my train of thought. How do you do 15 minutes? Rest upon yourself. I really don't have a deep reason for this. Wasn't obsessed with trains as a kid, didn't use it particularly often. No my relatives were hit by one on March 23rd, 1976. I just kind of had this idea popping in my brain head and I said, hey, that's cool. No reason to delay this, and our tickets, that's the part. <gasps> so, let's start this list off like every good list should start. Illegal dogfighting. Pokemon had a trend of putting battles in the dumbest places imaginable. Putting one in a train though kind of makes sense. While the battle subway can be used as a train, it comes with having to also enter battles. There's several different kinds, all different kinds of rewards. Really, I just like the battle subway because of the mental image of someone just boarding it after a long, stressful day of work, only to have to endure a giant rock monster fighting a three-headed evil dragon. The most notable thing about it is the conductors. Subway bosses Emmett and Ingo. Oh, I see they have Ingo, I'm so sorry. They're both pretty challenging, but still fun. Even if I question why Ingo has an extra doll that can use Earthquake, like, bro, do you want to be out of a job and also a life? There isn't really much to say about the Battle Subway, hence why it's our first stop, so we should continue on. Gotta keep these train puns rolling. Like a train. <gasps> the next entry on this list was considered for every single part of this list, including being left off entirely. I put it number 9, though, because... So, Polar Express, am I right, gamers? This is very much one of the movies ever made. I don't have any strong feelings on it. But hey, it's got a train. The train isn't much special, but everything around it. The conductor stands as the one counter to the joke of never vacation with Tom Hanks. There's that one kid in the internet decided to hate, who's with the same guy as Mandark, and I cannot unhear it. <laughs> and then there's a reason I refuse to watch this film when I was six. What I like about this train is the inside of it. There's nothing visually special, but it's just, I don't know, warm? It just seems like a nice, cozy place to be in. Most of the trains I've been on are very metallic and lighting. It's nice to see one that's just nice, you know? It really makes you want to just join the old guy when he comes to you and says that if you board this train, you will get to see Santa. If any children are watching this, Santa's real. You just gotta run off the train station without your parent permission at 2 a.m. Trust me, it's how I got this. <gasps> All right, hear me out. What if trains could think and talk and do their taxes? It's a very scary thought, I know, but I'm here for you. Mega Man is heck bent on making absolutely anything into a robot. So it's no surprise that in the fifth game, we got one based on a train. Charged Man was made for transport and very cost effective, running on water. No idea how that works, but frick is a robot, so whatever. The stage, as I said, is all about transport, which starts as a shipping depot before it's just trains. Nothing but trains. Just riding on trains, flooding on trains, Mets trains, baby! Love the Mets trains! His boss fight isn't that special, though the rain and coals are cool. Hitting him gets you the worst power-up in Mega Man history. Charge Kick. Which has no range, and you're more likely to take damage than give it. So I've been kind of negative on this guy, but there is a reason why he made this list. In Battle Network, we get Chargeman.exe, who's a massive improvement. Instead of the Transformers body, we can still get this more trailing body with little grabby arms. And he gets the personality of a gruff but still nice worker. I don't know, it just goes hard. Does it make up for this? No. Nothing can, but it's a good step. <gasps> so, what are the connections between trains and death? There's a whole train ride to the afterlife trope, which I'll talk about later. But like, why are trains always ghostly, or haunted, or dead? You, you can't kill trains. How do you kill trains? Asking for a friend. When it comes to death, nothing can make you wish for that sweet release from one cuphead. And thankfully, it's got a train. In one of the later fights, you fight death. But death is a train. The fight with Phantom Express has four phases, each against a different spook. First you have the Blind Spectre, who has eyes on his hand so he's not blind, I call shenanigans! Second is Big Skeleton, because we've been through 15 boss fights from the game based on old cartoons, we gotta reference Skeleton Dance eventually. The next phase is... whatever this is. Actually, all the phases are made of different yokai, so that's pretty cool. This is also probably the easiest phase. Before going on to the hardest, the head of the train, who suddenly gains weird Ramon legs. You have to parry his glowing tail to attack a fireplace heart. That's a sentence. Also, didn't they sell their souls to the devil? How does he have a heart? Like everything in Cuphead, this fight comes with so much creativity and also bull stupid that you just have to admire it. Pencil Neck Fricker is still dumb though. Hey, Pencil Neck! Surrender that ice cream cone or every waking moment for you will become a swirling torrent of pain and misery! <laughs> 
So you know the joke about how a regular stretch episode starts normal, but by the end of it, it just goes completely bonkers? Well, I feel like the Adventure Time equivalent is that an episode starts off like very calm and nice and funny and innocent and cool, then it just gets unbelievably dark. <laughs> that describes the whole show, but even individual episodes follow this. You get a video game! Oops, the game tries to kill you. The Spoons and Hollis Prank? Oops, one million years dungeon! Get a new super form? Oops, causes your best friend excruciating pain. The best example of this is a season 5 episode, Dungeon Train. In this episode, which came out on my birthday, based, after Finn loses yet another relationship, he and Jake board a train that has near infinite different cars full of different things in each car. It starts off fine until Warrior attacks them. But the two take him out and get his stuff. Thug life. Words to repeat until Jake tries to get them to leave, while Finn wants to stay. Jake finds out though that all the monsters have been killing him from people on the train prior, and Finn is on his way to insanity too as he's now a mass murderer as canon. However, Twisted Vision and Jake calling him out for being one of those Twisted Lost Soul boss guys are gonna make time going on the darkest and yet dumbest shows I've seen in my entire life at the same time, cause him to snap out of it before he commits complete genocide. When Jake is your voice of reason, maybe we've gone too far. Please? What are you gonna do? I'm ten times stronger than <laughs> So like, Remember when people wanted to burn down Nintendo because they put a train in Zelda? Like, people got pissed when Zelda had modern tech. Even though before this game we had cameras and telephones. Heck, Breath of the Wild had a freaking motorcycle and iPad. But the train is too far? Whatever. The Spirit Train is actually pretty cool. The worst part of some Zelda games is trying to get from one dungeon to the other. But the Spirit Train finds a way to make that fun. Getting to other places is less than a walk and more like a chase or something as a demon train follows you. But it's cooler since we got cannons. The entire game is based around the train, but it's not just surface level. Everything is focused around trains, it's just trains, world population, train. The final boss even incorporates a train, where you fire balls at the demon train. Yes, I did phrase it that way on purpose. It's fun. Also, Zelda is freaking dead here, but unless you're in the deepest depths of demon art, she's not a train. Let's leave before this gets off the rails. Did I make a joke already? I, I don't freaking know, my, my brain is literally just a train by now. <gasps> After number 5 was a spirit train, we have number 4, the spirit train. Wait, what? Oh. That checks out. The train in Spiritual Way is quite fascinating. In a film full of great little moments, this is one of its best. After one of the more intense scenes in the film, this is just simply Chihiro and No Face riding a train. In Afterlife Express, especially. One that takes a departed soul to the afterlife. You'll see that it once went both ways, but no longer does. Really, while there's a lot of things to say about this scene, not only has it all been said before, like a lot of the best Ghibli moments, it's really just best to let it speak for itself. No one funny joke this time, just a fantastic scene from a fantastic movie. <gasps> so it's just kind of my intention that I've never talked about what the history of trains are. Uh, that's a big mistake on my part, you're probably really confused. Basically, the history of trains started in the prehistoric era. It was used to divide, there were several different parts of train history. It's divided into eras where you see... <laughs> Yeah, you all saw us coming. You were probably expecting to be number one, in fact. The reason why it's number three is, well, I was never really a talentless person. I caught a few episodes as a kid, and Thomas Bradley pops up on a lot of those lists of old creepy cartoon episodes, but wasn't a quintessential part of my life. I was more of a Backyardians kid when it comes to the bloody war of preschool kid shows. But Thomas holds a lot of merit. It's just got a charm that no other show has mostly due to the art style. One thing I was surprised about looking through all these old Thomas episodes is how little of them actually include Thomas. Like, he's definitely there, but looking through some of the more popular episodes, he's usually not there, but the rest of the cast is good enough to carry it. I've been kind of back and forth with Thomas in this section, but that's because Thomas is such an interesting series, both in the show itself and its influence on the greater world. Like, I probably think of Thomas when I hear trains before I think about actual trains. Also, shout out to Thomas for being the only fictional character who has more demonic versions of him than Mickey Mouse or Spongebob. What insane person made these, and what was their purpose? It must be quite the locomotive. <gasps> yeah, if you knew me, you know this is inevitable. I'll be somewhat vague since spoilers, but even without going into the plot of Infinity Train, since you were legally required to experience that on your own, there's so much to talk about. The Infinity Train, which is kind of a Metro as a girl moment, since the train is in-universe nameless, isn't actually infinite, but definitely feels like it is. The train seeks out people who have some sort of problem they need to overcome, and when they're in this very vulnerable moment of their lives, 
Obviously the best thing to do is freaking Narnia them to the depression mobile. The train is however made to help people out, and the creatures in it, called denizens, are supposed to help push riders into solving their problems. They are not always successful. But I really question how helpful these cars are at points, and the point of them. Like there's one with a Silent Hill monster, a movie theater where you're fed to some of the creatures, cross-eyed ducks, golden winged snakes, among us. Not much to say here that isn't spoilers. When it comes to what's inside, it's easily the most interesting. Watch the Tandy Train. There is no joke. <gasps> the Mugen Train. Do you say this is my favorite anime or anything? But this is a pretty fun film. Phantom Train. You can suplex it! Hogwarts Express. I mean, it's good, but it's not enough, Nicholas. What do you want? Snowpiercer. Great film. Great train. Very dark. And this is a video where I talk about freaking Thomas. Story Train, because despite being a Snowpiercer parody, I almost included it instead because I lost control of my life. The train in Spider-Man 2, because this fight goes so hard! The Rail Racers, Living Trains and Transformers, Base, Animal Crossing Train, I don't know, I just found it relaxing. Finally, the Excess Express from Paper Mario 2. I love Brutal Mourners, you saw that here. There's Penguins, there's whatever the frick this thing is. I definitely want to get through this, this is, this is number 11. <gasps> so, I'm assuming if you're clicking on this video, you're probably expecting Thomas to be number 1. If you knew me, you probably were expecting Infinity Chain to be number one. So, what's number one if not either of those two? Well, obviously, number one has got to go to the Wild D Train, baby! That's right! Wild D Train! Wild D Train! Wild D Train! Wild D, he's a train! He's a Wild D Train! Wild D Train! You see the videos about trains in the morning, the Wild D Train! I don't know, I don't think they are Wild D Train! They are a train! They are a train! They train! Why do Wild D Train this? Because it's not train Wild D Train! And they Wild D Train! You know what I mean? You know what I mean? That was our final stop. Please exit the vehicle now. Or else. Hi, new train friend. Welcome to episode 91 XSD. Yeah, who's the best kitty in the world? It's not you. It's definitely not you. It's Pinky. Pinky's way better than you are. But you are you are the cat that decided to walk downstairs, which means you have to be the cat that get in the look at his face. This is the thumbnail now, forget it. <laughs> okay, I'll stop and annoying you. You decide to walk into my domain, t Turbo. You know what you got. You, you, you know what you... That's what you freaking deserve!